feeding time at the zoo. Puppy, eat your food. Okay, guys, welcome to Clunkers and Classics. Uh, last episode, tore down the whole front end here. And I've since painted most of the firewall and the uh, frame and everything uh, with pour 15. Okay, I'm not quite done yet. I got all this. So I'm going to paint this with regular paint here. I still got to put some silicone around the little uh, drain holes for the sunroof. Uh, they do work. It rained. been raining all light rain all morning. And I checked those. Uh, it's, mo it's tilted up, so most of it was coming out the back drain holes. So all that worked. Okay, of course it got some rain in because everything's all open. So there's... Uh, not much like a couple little puddles Okay, so all this is all painted under here. I was gonna go to uh, Lowe's and get some of that duct insulation stuff and Do all the firewall and all the floor But uh, I still might if not I'll be gonna do it in the morning and Then we'll get all that on there um, Get a weight on my heater core, once the heater core gets here, we can put in the back part of it. Uh, probably the front part to clean that, clean that AC out. Okay, I got a problem with the headliner. That, uh, what was that glue we used? Hang on. Use two cans of this uh, Loctite spray adhesive. Says it was for headliners and vinyl, but it didn't work. After about three or four days there, it all fell down. You can see the headliner all drooping. Every bit of it, even these little areas like this. So I bought a can of uh, 3M. I'm not going to take it all down. I'm just going to open up like along that <clears throat> edge there and just spray in there. I'll probably do the back. Um, take off the back and spray in there and uh, see if that'll hold. If it doesn't hold, there's no use doing the rest of it. And we're, we're going to have to do something else. Try some contact cement or something. I don't know. But anyway, no big, big deal. But I don't know whether it's... Uh, it can't be the vinyl. It has to be the, the old headliner itself. Like this stuff where I painted it has to be that that the glue's just not sticking to, and it obviously did it because it got hot. You know, been over 100 degrees every day. Okay, so I'm gonna do that here in a minute. Um, it's been a couple of days. Of course, it's the weekend, so I haven't heard from the eBay seller about my. A frame delivery screw up there that they did they only sent me two upper ones instead of all four uh, I filed a thing to, to uh, for a return I'm waiting on them to send me a return label or something so I'm gonna have to reorder the a-frame kit upper and lower and I haven't ordered the brakes yet either because uh, there are A-frame kits that it fits later 70s Firebird and Camaro spindles or some crap, which which I don't think was on the original auction. Um, so I need to order the right spindles with the brake kit to fit the control arms and all that. I may just order it all from one place if I can. So we may have to wait on that. I showed you all the parts last video. You can look at it. I got all the front end tie rods and idle arm and center link and all that stuff uh, or probably just put it all on at once so not much I can do with this I don't like I said we can put together this deal here uh, so the only other thing I don't know if this is dented up here oh that was for the uh, 
That was for the AC lines. Okay, I think I'm going to clean up and straighten out and dolly. You know, got to dolly all these little ed all these little edges here. Sand it all down, get rid of some crap, cut off some bolts that are never came off. And uh, basically pour 15 that, just like I did this firewall and frame. So, have them to do the core supports. Isn't too bad, other than I believe this little edge here. I think it might be bent right there too. See if we can dolly that out. Dolly this out. Uh, the AC line went in, one of them went in this hole, and the other one went underneath, over to here. Uh, I don't know whether I should leave that hole there. It doesn't look like a rust hole. It looks like somebody made it. I don't know. Um, so I think we'll clean up this core support, paint it too, pour 15. And then, it's these other parts here. Such as these brackets here. Uh, there should be another bracket. Oh, that's it right here. Okay, we'll take that bracket off. Uh, all them brackets all underneath here. Sand it. Pour 15 it. Uh, the hood hinges are screwed up because I got them wallowed out. The holes wallowed out. See here. And if I remember right, they say a 68 and 69 are different hood hinge bolts. Uh, I'm not sure if they're... These are different holes or the holes where they line up on the fender are different. But that's probably what happened. They had a 69 hood maybe and stuck a 68 hinge and they had to wallow them out. I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to figure that out. We'll probably buy new hinges. I mean, I could fix these, but I don't know. They've been stuck up for 30-something years in the field. Uh, so I'm not sure about them yet. Uh, probably pour 15 the uh, bumper brackets, even though one's kind of had been welded onto that frame. And then... We'll clean up. Uh, I have to clean up this AC thing here. Put that on there. Unless the one in my shed for 69 is a lot cleaner. Uh, all inside the fender here. I'm going to clean up. Paint all inside the fenders. Uh, that, I don't know what that is. Oh, that might have been where I ground off the... I don't know. Uh, we may make some patches here for this. Unless I can find some cheap ones, but if they're 50 bucks, screw it. We're going to make our own patches. Pour 15, all this, all under here. So, I think that's what we'll do this video. Get all these parts all rust-treated and painted and ready to go back on whenever well i could probably put the fenders on and everything but we're not going to put we're not going to put the core support and all that in until the ls engine's in here if that's the way i'm going there's no use no use lifting an engine way up and putting it in over top of radiator support when i already got it apart we'll just go straight in like this We've got a lot of test fitting to do with that ALS to make sure it clears clear stuff. And if it doesn't, then i got to buy motor mount kits and uh, relocation kits or weld up something or uh, raise up the power steering if it hits the box and the AC. Anyway, it's going to go in and out, in and out, in and out ten times. So there's no use putting the front end on there. Okay, so uh, let me get that 3M glue and we'll go to the back and spray it in the back half there and see what that does. 
Uh, where did I get that? I got the 3M spray glue from uh, Walmart. And it's the only 3M stuff they have. I know they have like 20 different kinds of spray glue, 3M, but this is the only one they carried. So we're, we'll try it. And I'll probably get comments, oh, you should have used the other stuff. Well, they didn't have it. Where am I, you know? Okay, so uh, let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, guys. I just opened that up through the back, took off the uh, wind lace molding. And uh, I, can just, I can get in there, just like I get the top. So I'm going to spray in there. I can feel the old stuff. It's, it actually feels a little... Well... You can feel the old glue on there, but it's just not sticking. So I'm afraid it's... Okay, so anyway, that's all Walmart had. High strength 90 contact adhesive 3M. Uh... You can write down in the comments if if there's better stuff for this situation, but uh, don't just say try it. If you know for a fact that there is some stuff that will just stick, and you know, I, I, at 12 bucks a can, I can't be experimenting and trying out 10 different brands to see if something will work. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna spray that in there and see what happens. I'll be back. Hey guys, I did the back part. Uh, supposed to let it dry between one minute and ten minutes. Give it about five minutes. Pushed it all up there. It seemed to stick real good. Now, I opened up the, took the wind lace around the sunroof off, and just sprayed like hell in there. And it sprayed all the way down. It sprays pretty far, and everything. So. Fixing to push this up, put this wind lace on there, and we'll see see if it'll hold like the back, and then we'll see uh, how long it'll hold. You know, give it a few, two, three, four, or five days, see if it'll fall down like the other one did. Okay, anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the back part done, or the front part, and uh, it seems to be holding too, so. I don't know. We're back to where we started from. Uh, we'll see if it holds or falls down. I have to try something else if it, uh, if it does. Okay. I'm gonna, I got a seam seal. If you can see here, where the sun's shining through. Can you see up here where the sun's shining through right there? There's a bunch of little spots like that that I'm fixing to put some seam sealer. I believe that was this little spot here. So I'm going to seam seal up all this. Uh, you can see where some of the old stuff was. We're just going to coat it all real good. Uh, all around here. Here. I chipped a lot of it off. I mean, if you wanted to be a perfectionist, you could take a wire wheel and take all that old stuff out. But I'm just going to smear a coat all the way around it. Okay, and I believe this top is good. I put a little, just a little bit along here, just in case. Um... I think there was a couple of more little spots basically where I'm not going to do it yet but where these you know the accelerator cable goes in this goes in uh, there's a few more you know where the speedometer cable goes in all that just make sure everything's sealed up good but for now I'm going to concentrate on these factory factory joints here and just go around it real good right in here there's another hole there another hole there uh, there was there was sealer in there it just, I just popped it all out uh, a lot of the stuff just flaked off uh, down in here yeah there, there was usually a big old glob of it there and I had a screwdriver and it just popped it off so that's what we're gonna reseal here 
Okay, so I'm going to go around and do all that. I got some, just bought three more tubes of seam sealer from eBay. Uh, this seemed to be about the cheapest. I forget what it was, 10 bucks a tube or something. Okay, so I'm going to be doing that. I'll be back. Okay, guys. Uh, got this stuff at Lowe's. What a fiasco that was in there. Of course, no workers around, so I... I looked around, looked around, I found this stuff, it wasn't boxes of it with no prices, all different sizes, and uh, it's not sticky, so I went to cash out and told the cashier, listen, I need somebody, somebody told me that there's, uh, they sell Thermo King duct insulation here, and uh, I need to find that, because this not what this is and it's supposed to be sticky back so that's what somebody told me there a while back so after about 30 minutes of walking around with this employee she's looking it up on her phone and can't find nothing and we're walking over to the roofing section and walking all the way across the store to the plumbing section and uh, finally found this this is the biggest stuff they had not Thermo King, it's Frost King. And, you know, I told him, I said, well, maybe it's been about a month or two. Maybe y'all don't sell Thermo King anymore. <clears throat> so, well, this stuff wasn't priced. Ended up being 21 something. And it's, uh, what does it cover here? Covers 50 square feet. But not bad. But what I told her was, you know, I, Contact cement's twenty one ninety seven a, a quart. I said, now I got to buy a quart of contact cement, and it's double the price now already. So they had this. It doesn't say how much uh, area it covers, but you know you can see the difference here. It's not going to cover very much, but it's the adhesive back, self adhesive foil and foam. But twenty six something for this. So anyway. The carpet that I got, uh, it's, it already has insulation, but we're going to put this down underneath the carpet, before the carpet, and then we're going to use this adhesive stuff uh, up here where all the heater, heater and everything goes, all in this area here. So we're going to self-adhese it all here, all the way across. Well... I'll probably just go down to the steering column for now and uh, save a little bit and do around the steering column whenever that's all situated. It's it's all loosened up so I could pull it down and once all the dash and wiring is all back together, I can, I'll can i do that. And the carpet, I believe, only comes up to about here anyway. So we'll use the rest of that stuff down here. I might have to add a little contact cement, but I probably won't add much. I'm not going to waste it. it. Stuff's like liquid gold now. Uh, that's what I told her. I said, listen, I come in here. One week it was eight ninety seven a quart. Next week it was twelve ninety seven a quart. Next week it's eighteen ninety seven a quart. And now it's it's twenty one ninety seven a quart. Oh, I know. She goes, everything's going up but our wages. And I said, well, from what I heard, wages are going through the roof too. You know, the Walmart dry, uh Drivers have got their wages doubled, and some punk kid on the on the on a news segment there, he's working at a hotel or something for twenty bucks an hour, and just he's sitting there and on his phone and decides that uh, now nah, he don't like working there no more because people he works with don't like that don't like the place. He does a few clicks on his phone. I don't know what website he went to, but he got another job. He was getting twenty dollars an hour at the hotel. Gets another job uh, right away. Uh, start to, start the next day at, for thirty five bucks an hour, and the reporters like just amazed at it. But that that's the way it is now. There are so many. We're twelve million workers short. People are companies are just trying to hire anybody they can, and they're willing to pay double the wages. So if any of you guys out there, y'all need a raise. Y'all should go get one because. Try to keep up with this economy. Of course, I'm self-employed or whatever, so I can, I'm not going to be doubling my 
prices or whatever on stuff. But anyway, that's the way the economy is. The oil companies are 300,000 employees short. That's why the gas prices are high. They're not willing to uh, invest any more money. They got screwed during the, during the pandemic and they don't want to invest billions of dollars more and get screwed again. So anyway, that's in case any of you are wondering why prices are going through the roof. That's most of it. Okay, yeah, I don't know why they haven't paid Lowe's employees more. That's kind of weird. Okay, so I'm going to stick this stuff on there. And uh, we'll go from there. I think I'll just rip. Instead of cutting out all the little holes and everything. I'm going to cover everything. And then we're going to do the big water test. I know there's still some stuff here, like for the throttle cable. I'll put some tape over there, and then I'm going to put the hose over all down these ducts here and see if anything leaks in there. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I'll be... Oh, I think I wanted to show you something else, but... Anyway, I'll, I'll be back. Yeah, I also got two uh, tubes of silicone, $10 each. Another rip off okay so I put some on the back I just kind of left this stuff here so don't really have to take it off so I'm gonna leave it like that and then do a water test uh, we can leave that open this flapper here I tried to take it out <clears throat> okay so I just done like half of it half the firewall and that's where the heater box and everything will mount to. And we just went down to here. Uh, this flapper door does open. I tried taking it off, but it's got these embedded. Uh, I got three of them out. And these these two here wouldn't come out. You can't you can't get a you can't get the nut on nut driver on top of it there because it's embedded in the plastic. But it does open and close. Uh, it's it's vacuum operated, so it lets in fresh air when the uh, I guess the AC and the heater are off. Uh, we got a little bit closer. It just opens up, and the blower motor's here, so it'll just blow fresh air through there. Uh, it could be leaking, but as far as I could tell, it's not. I mean, I I mean like water tight leaking it could be uh, I don't know it looks like it's very well sealed on there so we'll see if that leaks if it leaks from there if it leaks from somewhere I can't see like up under here or something we'll test it out uh, probably do it in the morning but I'll uh, tape up these little holes and uh, and Put the water hose on it, see if anything leaks in there. Close up the doors real good. And hopefully the water leak have stopped. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean out this, the front piece of it. Uh, probably take it apart, blow it out, take the water hose to it, clean all that crap out of there and get that ready to uh, put back on, but I'm probably not going to put that back on For a while the new heater core should be in probably tomorrow We'll go ahead and put the back part on and just put a couple of a uh, Couple of screws on here to hold it Till we're ready for that So I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with the engine or not it may see that's another thing I you know I need a, a guy that's done Done an LS swap on, kept the factory AC and done it in a Chevelle. You know, I still get all these comments and I, you know, I don't know if it's going to hit the power steering box or I, I got to get, probably got to get the shorter oil pan. I know the motor mounts. Uh, I'm not sure. Somebody said they, you get the re, re locating mount kit and you mount it all the way up here or something. And of course, if you do that, then you're going to have to 
do something with the drive shaft. So what I can avoid and not avoid, I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, the AC comes out here. Is that going to be an in interference with the engine? Or should I just leave it out till I get the engine in there and then try to put it in? I don't know. I guess I could, well, see, I want to silicone it on there. That's what the silicone's for. I silicone all this right here. So I don't want to silicone it all on there and then have to take it off again. But, I don't know. I may have to. And I don't know if I'm going to use the truck AC stuff or not. But anyway, that insulation in there is taking the place of this. About the shit can this. That's the factory insulation. It's all deteriorated. Okay, so... Uh, and this is the box. Well, this is the old box. The new box is going in. That goes in behind the dash. And like I said, I'll just put a couple of nuts on, on top of these and hold it in there just to get it in there. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll start on these pieces here, dollying them out, and uh, sand them down and pour 15 of them. So... I'll be doing that next. I'll be back. Okay, guys. I took all this apart. Uh, cleaned out all the dirt, blew it out and everything. And then I had to hose it out real good. Uh, the other side, this flap is, or with this cover. Big old dirt dauber. About the size of a fist. So I had to really clean that out good. Okay, so I put that together. Uh, that's ready to put it back on. The heater core should be here in a couple hours. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put everything back on there. Uh, I did the water test. And the only place it was leaking was this little vacuum line that I assume goes to there. Because it was, you know, rotted off. Uh... I'm pretty sure it does because it's a very very small little uh, vacuum line this was it here see how small that is I couldn't find nothing to match it other than this hard plastic which won't you know connect on uh, so that was it here it was just gushing down water out of there so I resealed it top and the bottom with some seam sealer. Okay, and uh, I'm not sure where all these vacuum lines go. Um, I'm not sure if that one goes to that. And then I think there's a middle one missing out of this one. Came out, goes to the firewall. That may go to this. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. But anyway, yeah, she's ready to put the... Once I get the new heater core in, I'll show you a little bit of that. And then we'll stick it all in there and mount it all in. Uh, I believe that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay, well, I'll be back. Oh, uh, I tested this. I gotta blow this off here. Uh, I tested this and it actually works. Works pretty, works pretty good, uh, doesn't make no noise. Like now since I dropped it, but. And I think they're about, you can buy it with or without the little squirrel cage thing here. But I think it's about $89 is the cheapest for the motor and the squirrel cage. And I figure, well, I'll just go ahead and use this one. Um, don't have to take the whole fender off, as I remember now. You just got to take the you gotta take the inner wheel well out, this fender liner here, out to get at that uh, blower motor which is right here. 
I, well, no, maybe. Yeah, because the fender bolts here, but I think you can get underneath here and pull it out if I remember right. Uh, so we'll tr we'll try that one. You know, if it. Uh, I like to get a new one, but you know, it's Chinese made. So is it going to last as long as this one? I don't know. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, just got the new heater core in from uh, Parts Geek on uh, eBay. Uh, I think it was 40, 47 bucks, something like that. I know, and it's aluminum, whereas the uh, factory is copper. But like I said, I didn't want to take a chance because that would be a real pain to get changed over. Uh, with the car, I'll put that back together. So I'm going to put that back in the housing, which I got over here. Uh, an update on those four A-frames that I bought. Two of them were missing in the uh, box. box was all beat to hell. I don't know if I showed it in this video or not. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of dark. But, uh, yeah, this beat-up box here. And only two A-frames were in it. So, I don't know what happened. Whether two fell out or missing a bot, another box or what. I had uh, messaged them. Oh, shit. That's been uh, four days ago. And then I filed for a refund to return it. Then today, I got to get an offer from them, a settlement of... Uh, because it cost like over 300 bucks, a little over 300 with shipping and handling. They offered $50 back and I keep it, keep the item. Well, what good is it? It's missing the two lower A-frames. So I declined it. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, in three days, if they don't respond uh, or settle, then eBay steps in and uh, basically tells them to give me my <laughs> full refund back. And I'll send the damn thing back. Okay, so that's the that's what's up with that. So the A-frame and everything, uh, it doesn't look like a second box is coming. So it is going to be returned because they haven't responded to that email either. So I still got to order all the brake stuff. So I'm going to try to match it up and get the right brake spindle in the kit the right brake kit with the right spindles which is normal not two inch lowered and not friggin whatever that one said later model f body camaros and firebirds uh 70s camaros and firebird i don't even know what the hell that meant uh that wasn't in there when i ordered it they put it in later i guess so I guess I'm gonna, but now I need my 300 bucks back. I need my 300 bucks back to buy new stuff or else I'm gonna have to put in more money in PayPal. So once I do all that, I'm gonna order the right brake kit and with the matching A-frames and everything. So it's, it's probably gonna be a while guys before I do a video on that, before I get that in. Okay, so I'll come back in a little bit when I get this uh, heater core in the box and we're going to start mounting it on the firewall there okay i'll be back okay guys here's the old heater core it's probably good heavy made out of copper here's the new one here uh it slides right into here but it mounts on with these two brackets and uh in the 68 these brackets weren't on there the thing was flopping and busted the flapper so this is from the 69 so got those two mounts on there and mount in there with the four screws like this okay and we just slide this on we'll do it with two hands slide it on there uh i think four screws and then this mounts back on top there it's got a, it's got a slide it's got to slide through this right here and mount that on there with three, three screws. Then we're ready to mount it in behind the firewall, which is uh, 
just these four. These four here go through the four holes. I believe right here, I put a screwdriver and busted a hole through it. One, two, three, four. That comes out and then slides into this unit here to these four and you put the nuts on the end of that and then bolts on the rest. There's two, uh, I think in here somewhere, two bolt holes, two bolt holes up here. Uh, but this one I'm gonna have to, well, I'll come back when I get the back part in there. Hopefully it'll stay up in there so I can get this on there. But we're gonna have to put uh, silicone. We're gonna put silicone all the way around this edge here that little groove I don't know if it's supposed to have a gasket or what but whatever it was was missing so we're gonna silicone that up real good put it on there and then uh, same with this we're gonna have to silicone the uh, I found another blower motor uh, it's a little stiff it comes on but it's a little tight so I'm not sure it'd probably be okay but this one seemed to be a lot a lot more freer um, so we're going to use this one. Got a spare though. Uh, so we're going to put silicone around this edge and then mount that on, on here. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay guys, it's in from the back. Uh, obviously it won't stay up there by itself. Well, the two bottom ones did. It has to be pulled out and there's the top, top two there. But I can get these started and then pull this and, and get these four on there. Just thought I'd show you. Sit up in there. I siliconed all around here. Hopefully I don't, I don't have to take it back off, but Anyway, I'll push that up there and put four of these on there and then the rest of the bolts and the sides. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, I got it all mounted. I went ahead and just run them wires back. Not exactly sure where that little ground goes, but uh, just same as leaving this on there. I just left them on there so I know where, where everything goes. Um, might have to take them off if they get in my way later on, but for now, I uh, just stuck some paper towel in there, keep the dirt daubers or whatever out. But, uh, yeah, siliconed all around the outside, and then the outside of the blower motor. This little vent here didn't quite fit, but I'll figure something out. And I plugged them wires back in. So I think that's it for that little job. Uh... You gotta figure out where these vacuum wires go. That probably goes to the carburetor, but uh, I'll have to get a little schematic drawing where all them vacuum lines go. Most of them are on there, but there's just gonna be a few. There's this one here uh, for the wipers, I believe, to uh, for the windshield washer squirt or things. Uh, there's a couple other little things in here, but. Okay, well that's it. Uh, hopefully that won't get in the way of the motor. I mean it won't, but I'm worried about the area of how much room I'm gonna have to, to fix stuff. You know, the headers are gonna be right here and uh, stuff like that. So it'd be better if it was out of the way until I finished with that, but I didn't wanna leave everything open, you know. You know how, how I am. I like to get stuff put back together as quickly as I can. I don't like leaving stuff around and you forget how stuff goes back together and all that. Okay, so I'm going to go... Uh, what did I check on? Oh, a core support is about 300 bucks. So we're definitely going to save that. Uh, this filler panel here, you can get. It's 100 bucks. Um, I may get one of them or I may fix that one. I got another core support. Uh, 
Ah, there's too much weeds over there. I got another core support. Showed way back in an old video. But one corner's bent. But I'm not sure if that filler panel is on there. I doubt it. But there might be some little things on that that I could use uh, for this. But, oh, here goes my lights on now. Okay, so I'm going to clean these up, dolly out the edges, and pour 15 of them. Okay, so I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Okay, guys, scuffing up the uh, wheel wells. Uh, so there's a couple ways of doing this. You can either buy new ones, or you can sit there for all day with a wire wheel and clean it all the way down to the bare metal and prime it and all that. Or you could do what I'm doing is just scuff it down, and then we're going to pour 15 it or you can use some rust neutralizer rust uh, encapsulator whatever you want uh, I'm not gonna take I just scrape the loose stuff off that little spot undercoating that's it that's the driver's side it's in good shape this is the passenger side and you know it was hit right on the front here showed you what the uh had welded on the bumper bracket and welded on the filler panel to the fender well this is this here's been crunched up and the welds are coming apart on here so i'm going to dolly this out best i can uh re-weld it and then uh this one will be ready to paint but i've pretty much just scuffed up all the loose rust Thing. See where I gotta re weld it in here, dolly it out a little bit. I don't know what wheel wells cost, but they're probably quite a bit since they look oversized. Shipping are pretty big anyway. Core support, like I said, was 300 and about 300 bucks. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Gonna do them two wheel wells and then uh, do the core support. A little bit lighter core support and underneath the header and behind the fenders and stuff we'll do that later but for now we'll do the wheel well so i'll be back in a little bit puppy puppy away from the cat food okay guys feeding time at the zoo pup pup stay away from the that's your dog food right here Okay, guys. So I'm going to show you the cats and the dog. Okay, I got the wheel wells painted. Uh, this is that area here that I had to straight dolly out and weld, weld up. So anyway, I'll probably just spray some spray paint or undercoating or something under there. I don't know. Anyway, that's those done. I just brushed on some uh, Pour 15. I got a little six pack of these little cans here. Uh, yeah, you got to put some, if you're going to reuse it, put some plastic around it or something to, or else the lid will weld to the thing and you'll have a hell of a time getting it off that's why i buy them by the little whatever they are four ounce or something uh because if a big quart would be enough to do the whole car pretty much and uh you'd have to do it all at once uh okay so i'm gonna end this video on that and by next video I'll have this core support and uh, the rest of these painted with the Pour 15. Then we'll get on to something else. Maybe we'll repair these rust, make some rust patches. Uh, I need to paint all this black. 
black paint, not the pour 15. If it's pour 15, you can only put it on rusty metal. It won't stick to this paint here. Put it on there and it'll just peel off. So I can do the door jam a little bit better. Paint this black. Probably find something else. I put a little pour 15 on the blower motor. Okay, so we got all this done here. Um, the A-Frame company on eBay, like I told you, they offered me $50. And I just declined it. Well, they sent me the, the whole 300 bucks back. So the next message was, I got a refund, $304, I think it was, with tax and everything. Get all that back. And then, I don't know, then I guess there's two different employees there because they're not coordinating. So the next message was, oh, uh, thanks for the pictures and uh, sorry about the shipping uh, screw up. Uh, we'll send you the bottom A-frames today. By the end of today, you'll have a tracking number. So I didn't even respond to it. So I don't know, I guess they're going to send me the bottom A-frames? I guess it wasn't coordinated. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll look for a tracking number. Um, see if they send them to me. I don't know how much good they're going to do now that I... They said it fits later 70s for Camaros and Firebird spindles. Unless I find a brake kit with those type spindles on it. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to do one of the videos coming up. I think I already told you before in another video. I'm going to do this whole back end. I'm going to straighten this big dent out here. But anyway, this, whatever this is, emblem, molding, whatever you want to call it, I cannot find a reproduction. I think it's 68 only. There's a bunch of 68 only stuff on this wagon. Because you like 69 and 70, 71. They're all different designs, and they got some of them got reverse lights in them, and so I think this is a '68 only emblem, and it's pretty pretty beat up. The plastic hair's all faded, and uh, the chrome's pitted, and everything. So, if anybody knows where I can get a new one, I want to put this old one back on. It's gonna look like shit. So. What I was thinking is taking it off and filling in the holes. Because I'm going to strip this down to the metal. Rework whatever dents. I'm sure there's some dents in it. Yeah, a little dent there, a little dent there. Uh, that one seems okay. So I'm going to paint all this black back here. Take off these molds also. Paint it all black. And uh, all, all the inside of the jams and everything. And get that pretty much done. And put the stuff back on it. I'm going to do away with my Stakely, Stakely Chevrolet from Dallas emblem. That's going to be done away with. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my only dilemma. I still need one more of these for a fender. They're the same from the tailgate. And the two fenders. I got two of them. I'm missing one. And I keep keep my eye out on eBay. There's still that one guy there that wants 150 bucks. He can go screw himself. 150 plus 10 bucks to ship. He wants 160 bucks for one emblem. Uh, if anybody knows, I know they don't make them new, but. Uh, Anybody knows one of them emblems? I guess they're probably 68 to 72 Nomad Wagon emblems. And then this is probably 68 only. Uh, okay, what else was I gonna. Oh, this week, well, within the next week, it's supposed to be getting the moldings in. The belt. It's this big long one here. That's why I'm gonna. Uh, paint all this black then put that molding on there weather strip belt moldings uh, whatever you want to call it and then just be done with the tailgate and to all the 
uh, sets, the eight, eight piece set for the doors, inner and outer, the outer piece here, then the inner piece that goes on the door panel. Once they get here, I can screw or rivet them on the door panels and put the door panels and speakers, wire the speakers, all that stuff. So that'll be a video coming up pretty soon because I'm kind of anxious to get all them door panels and speakers and everything. I'll get all that done. And then I think we can start on the carpet. It, don't, you know, it takes a few minutes. Lay that carpet, put the back seat back in there and probably lay the carpet on the front. But I'm going to leave the seats out so I can get under there and work under the dash till all the dash stuff. And that may be a while. I may have to incorporate a bunch of the uh truck ls wiring under there so but other than that it'll be all done except for mountain front seats <clears throat> okay so that's that'll be coming up too uh and then the front end stuff like i said i already got the all the the steering and and uh shocks coils all that stuff just waiting on the A-frames and the brake system, which comes with the spindles and everything. And then we can do all that. Put on the master cylinder, power booster, proportioning valve. Don't know when I'll get all that together and get it all done in one video, but that'll be coming up as well. So I think we'll end the video on that. Stay tuned. I got about a couple of minutes, five minutes of my Le Mans over here putting on a some wheel well moldings I bought for it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the price of them moldings. A set of four wheel well moldings for that Le Mans was 180, 80 something dollars shipped. Uh, you had to buy the set of four. They don't, <clears throat> I don't think they sell a single one, but if they did, they're like a hundred and something dollars each or something. Okay, so if you want to stay tuned for that, for just a few minutes, see Le Mans. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you haven't, bottom right hand corner of the screen, just click that, subscribe, like, comment, share, it's supposed to help out the al algorithms, it's supposed to be recommended to more people or whatever. Uh, if you want a bumper sticker, five bucks through PayPal at uh, clunkersandclassics at gmail.com, all that stuff's in the description, my P.O. box, if you want to send anything. All the kitties here are all lounging around taking a nap after eating and this one's laying here with puppy is that your new friend puppy <laughs> okay guys well uh thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next video okay guys i'm just going to do a little quick job here on the uh 70 le mans sport um, I bought this, oh, it's probably been going on two years ago now, traded it, traded it for a 67 Chevelle that was a basket case, but I only paid $3,000 for it, and the guy wanted 14000 for this one, or trade for a 67 Chevelle, so if you look at it, I didn't notice it till, I don't know how long after I bought it. But, it's missing the wheel well, chrome. I don't know why it's missing. Unless it was damaged or something. So, I can't remember whether they didn't sell them individually, or they were like a hundred and something bucks each or something. Something crazy. So anyway, I bought a set of four. Because uh, I went over it. See right here? little dent right there just a little ding right there they're very presentable I wouldn't worry about that but Let's see on this side here might be a little bit of a dent there other than that that's that's pretty good This one is, it's dented there and like pushed in right in here. 
but still, again, not bad at all. So it looks like I'll put on all four. Uh, so anyway, I just got them in. I haven't test fitted them yet. I bought a set for my 69 Chevelle over there a few years ago when I restored it. And they fit really good. So this is it here. This is the box they came in. They're very well packed. They were all together. I just got a razor blade and split them up. They were all to, all together in this here and packed with bubble wrap. So I'm fixing to open them all up. They come with uh, all new screws. So I'm fixing to open them up there and test fit them. And uh, hopefully they'll fit good. I don't have my glasses. I can't read what brand that is. What is that? Whatever. Maybe you can read it. Bought it off of eBay. What is it? Corvex? Corvex Moldings? Or maybe Corvex Register Trademark. I don't know. Uh, Supposed to fit 70 to 72. But anyway, I got them off eBay. We'll uh, we'll see if they fit. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I just replaced uh, the right side here. This one here fit pretty good, and then this one you had to cut it right here. Cut a little slit because it kind of went kind of went straight down I looked at the other one sure enough they had cut that one too see here where they cut it to make it fit so I don't know I'm uh, just gonna leave the left side just save the other moldings in case those ones get damaged but anyway, uh, just another little job. I know it needs to be washed, but if I wash it, it'll look like this again in a couple days. I'm bordered by dirt roads, and it's just a constant swarm of dust and dirt coming over here. So uh, these cars just get filthy in a few days. No use washing them. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> 